There's a small gland in your neck that could be responsible for your fatigue, dry skin, and weight gain. And when it's not working properly, everything falls apart, including your hair, nails, and skin. It's called the thyroid gland, and millions of people have an underactive thyroid without even knowing it. So today, I'm gonna show you the top 15 signs of hypothyroidism so you know exactly what to watch out for. Let's start by looking directly at the thyroid gland. For this test, you need a mirror and a glass of water. Your thyroid gland is located low on the neck, just above the collarbones. And when you swallow, it moves up and down, making it easier to see. So take a sip of water and hold it in your mouth. Then tilt your head back a little bit and swallow while looking at the base of your neck. And a pro tip, don't get confused by the thyroid cartilage in the middle of the neck. For men, that's the Adam's apple. Your thyroid gland will be below that. If you can't exactly see where the thyroid is, that's actually completely normal. Some people with healthy thyroids who are really slim and have a long neck might be able to make it out of the mirror. But usually, if it's big enough to see, that means your thyroid is enlarged and that's called a goiter. And people with hypothyroidism can develop a huge goiter. And the physiology is actually pretty cool. Basically, your brain monitors how much thyroid hormone is circulating in your body, and it sends a signal to your thyroid gland when it needs to produce more. That signal is called thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH for short. As the name suggests, TSH stimulates the production of thyroid hormone and also tells it to get bigger and stronger. But if there's a problem with the thyroid or a nutritional deficiency like iodine deficiency, no matter how big the thyroid gets, it just can't physically produce enough thyroid hormone. And this becomes a vicious cycle where the brain keeps releasing more TSH and the thyroid gland just keeps getting bigger and bigger. At a certain point, the thyroid will become so large that it will compress important structures in the neck, making it difficult to swallow and even hard to breathe. Now let's move on to your largest and most visible organ, your skin. Think of it like a brick wall with dead flattened skin cells forming the bricks. And like any good brick wall, a natural mortar made of oils and fats holds the bricks together and locks in moisture. But an underactive thyroid dramatically reduces the amount of healthy oils your skin produces, which can lead to dry, rough skin. Over time, moisture escapes from the deeper layers of the skin. And eventually, that wall literally starts to crack and fall apart. This is called asteatotic eczema or eczema crackle. This distinctive pattern is often called crazy paving. Not that kind of crazy. This actually refers to a type of pavement with a mosaic of irregular tiles. Your skin is constantly shedding and regenerating, and this process is disrupted in hypothyroidism. Did you know the average person sheds about three and a half pounds of dead skin per year? For my fellow millennials, that's about 10 avocados worth of dead skin which just sounds like a weird salad that nobody asked for. This process of shedding and regenerating is carefully regulated by enzymes that break down proteins holding together the outer layer of your skin. However, when your thyroid is underactive, these enzymes don't work properly, leading to a buildup of skin cells and proteins, and the results can be dramatic. This is a 43-year-old woman who had progressive skin thickening in her hands and feet over three months. This is actually a massive buildup of a protein called keratin. You can think of keratin like the body's natural armor. It's a tough, protective protein that gives structure and strength to your skin. Sometimes that's protective and healthy, like the calluses that build up on a construction worker's hands. But what we're seeing on this woman's foot is clearly excessive. In this case, it was her underactive thyroid that was preventing her skin from shedding properly, causing a condition called palmoplantar keratoderma. And amazingly, after just nine months of treatment with thyroid replacement hormone, her skin was back to normal. While we're on the subject of keratin, did you know that this protein makes up 90% of your nails and 95% of your hair? So it's no surprise that an underactive thyroid can have a major impact on your hair and nails. These are real images of a 41-year-old woman with hypothyroidism. This poor lady lost almost all of her hair over the course of just four months. And to understand what happened, you need to understand the life cycle of a hair. Each hair is created by special cells within the hair follicle. At some point, that hair will stop growing and enter a resting phase before it eventually falls out. And at any given time, about 10% of your hairs are in that resting phase, just waiting to fall out. But when your thyroid hormone levels are low, all of that gets disrupted. First, the production of hair slows down and becomes disorganized, and that leads to dull, brittle, thin hair. But even more distressing, 
the follicles will enter that resting phase prematurely. And within a few months, you can develop massive hair shedding. Here are some examples of hair thinning that are less severe, but are also caused by hypothyroidism. Now let's look at the nails of that same woman. A similar process happens where nail growth slows down and becomes disorganized. And sometimes this leads to thicker nails like we can see here. But although they're thicker, the nail quality is actually poor and they're quite prone to splitting. It turned out this patient had Hashimoto's thyroiditis, a condition where your immune system attacks your thyroid gland. She was immediately started on treatment with thyroid hormone replacement, and she made an incredible recovery. This is her five years later with a thick head of hair and normal nails. Thick vertical ridges can also appear on the nails, which typically crumble and break easily. Although I will note that vertical ridges can be benign and just develop with age. One other nail change you might see in hypothyroidism is onycholysis, where you get separation of the nail from the nail bed. And when the nail lifts up, air gets under the nail, which gives it this appearance. Of course, hair loss and hypothyroidism isn't just limited to the scalp. It can also affect the eyebrows, eyelashes, and body hair. This is a 72-year-old man with hypothyroidism who decided to stop taking his thyroid replacement medication about six months earlier. If you look closely, you can see some obvious findings of hypothyroidism that we've already talked about. Flaky, dry skin, and thinning of his hair. But let's focus on his eyebrows. Notice how the outer third of his eyebrow is so thin that it's almost completely disappeared. This is a classic finding of hypothyroidism that we call Queen Anne's sign, which is named after the eyebrows of Queen Anne of Denmark. Although truthfully, nobody really knows if she actually had hypothyroidism. If you love this kind of information and you want your questions answered in a monthly live stream, then click the link up here to become a channel member. Let's look at that image again. Do you see that swelling under his eyes? This is called periorbital edema. And yes, some people are more prone to bags under their eyes, like parents of a newborn. But it can also be a striking sign of hypothyroidism. But this isn't your typical swelling. And if you push on it, the texture will be firm, maybe even a little bit doughy. That's because it isn't just water. It's actually a buildup of gelatinous material in the skin called myxedema. It might sound kind of gross, but in the right quantities, this gel is actually part of an essential substance known as the extracellular matrix, which is kind of like the scaffolding or cushion between your cells. In fact, one of the major components of this gel, called hyaluronic acid, is commonly used in lip fillers. The trouble is, when you don't have enough thyroid hormone, that gel starts to get overproduced and builds up. We usually see this around the eyes, on the hands and the feet, but it can really build up anywhere as you'll see in this next case. This is a 35-year-old man who suffered a two-year history of progressive weakness in his arms and legs before he was finally diagnosed with hypothyroidism. Notice how his tongue and calf muscles are strikingly large? You guessed it, that swelling is caused by myxedema. Fortunately, everything went back to normal with treatment. But this also highlights how hypothyroidism can lead to obstructive sleep apnea. Basically, when your tongue gets this big and swollen, it can easily block off your airway when you're sleeping. Not only does this lead to excessive daytime sleepiness, but it also increases your risk of cardiovascular disease, stroke, and dementia. While hypothyroidism is a rare cause of sleep apnea, the good news is that if it's treated properly, it's often reversible. This gelatinous swelling doesn't just obstruct your airway, but it can also compress your nerves. Okay, try this test with me. If you can, put the backs of your hands together like this. This is called Phelan's test, and you wanna hold it here for about 30 to 60 seconds. What it's doing is applying pressure on the inside of your wrist right over the median nerve. And so if you develop numbness, tingling, or pain in your fingers, then you may have carpal tunnel syndrome. The carpal tunnel is a narrow passage in your wrist where the median nerve and the tendons that control your fingers are located. It's a pretty tight space, so any swelling in that area can very quickly compress the median nerve and lead to those classic symptoms like numbness and tingling of the fingers. While it's not the most common cause, some sources say that up to 5% of all cases of carpal tunnel are caused by hypothyroidism. That's actually quite a lot of cases, and that's a big deal because 
because it'll often resolve with the proper treatment of the thyroid. So identifying the root cause can prevent years of suffering and even prevent the need for surgery. But it's not just the median nerve that's at risk of compression. The facial nerve, which controls the muscles of your face, also passes through a narrow opening called the facial canal. This is a rare but fascinating case of a 40-year-old man who presented with a right-sided facial droop. On physical exam, it was clear that this wasn't a stroke. Instead, his doctors determined that the facial nerve was being compressed due to swelling from hypothyroidism. He was started on treatment right away, and he made a complete recovery. Absolutely incredible. But remember, if you or someone that you know ever develops a facial droop, I want you to assume that it could be a stroke and get to the hospital as quickly as possible. Don't stop to think about hypothyroidism. Your doctor can always think about rare causes later. All right, now I'm sure we all know someone who's always cold. They bundle up in a hoodie in the summer and bring a blanket into the movie theater and they wear socks to bed. Maybe that person's you. Some people just tend to run cold but it can be a telltale sign of a slow metabolism from an underactive thyroid. Basically, your cells are running on low power mode, doing only the basics to survive, without the extra energy and heat that comes from an active metabolism. In severe cases, this can quickly turn into a life-threatening medical emergency called myxedema coma. And that's exactly what happened to this 56-year-old woman who presented to the emergency department with fatigue and confusion. At this point in the video, you can probably just look at these images and make a spot diagnosis of hypothyroidism. Hair thinning, myxedema causing swelling in her face, Queen Anne's eyebrows, palmoplantar keratoderma, and thick, brittle nails. But what makes this case so life-threatening are things you can't see in the photo. She was confused. Her heart rate was slow, her respiratory rate was slow, and she was hypothermic, with a core body temperature of 34 degrees Celsius, or 93 degrees Fahrenheit. Her body was shutting down. Personally, I've seen two cases like this of myxedema coma, and both patients were so critically ill, they ended up in the ICU requiring life support. And even with the best medical treatment, up to 60% of people with myxedema coma will die. The best chance they have is if doctors make the diagnosis quickly and start giving thyroid hormone directly through the IV. But even IV thyroid hormone doesn't start working immediately. And these patients will often need intensive care and even life support until the treatment starts to take effect. This woman got lucky and beat the odds, making an incredible recovery. This is her one year after starting treatment and she looks like a different woman. Okay, let's pivot and focus on something completely different, skin color. Notice how the hand on the left has an orangey yellow color to it? This is called keratinemia, and it means there's a buildup of keratin in the body. Keratin is the orange pigment found in carrots, sweet potatoes, and pumpkins. It's also a precursor to vitamin A. Usually when you eat these foods, your body converts most of the keratin into vitamin A. But in hypothyroidism, that enzyme doesn't work as well. So this orange pigment builds up in the bloodstream and eventually deposits into the skin. And it's most noticeable in areas with thick skin like the palms and the soles. Fortunately, the buildup of beta carotene in itself is harmless. In fact, even with a healthy thyroid, if you eat enough of this pigment, you can give your skin an orange glow. Check out this TikToker who's promoting eating lots of carrots to change the undertone of her skin. Do not make me say it again. Three large carrots a day and you can change your natural undertone. This is literally the skin that I was born with and this is me with no fake tanner. I have been eating three large carrots a day. But Low thyroid hormones can also have a serious impact on your brain. Decreasing levels of your feel-good neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine and decreasing activity in the parts of the brain involved in emotional regulation, memory, and motivation. This can have a huge impact on your mental health, and it's the reason why a workup for depression should always include blood work screening for hypothyroidism. And for women, changes to your period can also be a clue. Low thyroid hormone can lead to high levels of estrogen and low levels of progesterone, both of which can affect your uterine lining. The result? More buildup leads to heavier, longer periods or irregular periods. And while hypothyroidism has a big impact on your reproductive system, it has an even bigger impact on a baby's development. This is such an important topic that I think we need to talk about more. And I actually published a paper about five things to know about subclinical hypothyroidism in pregnancy. Okay, so we've covered the more dramatic and obvious signs to watch out for. But some of the most common symptoms of hypothyroidism are also vague, like chronic fatigue, constipation, and 
weight gain. And since they're such common things that people experience, I think they easily get overlooked and don't necessarily get connected to hypothyroidism. So what causes hypothyroidism? Well, historically, the leading cause was iodine deficiency, which is why iodine was added to table salt in the 1920s. And this largely resolved the issue in developed countries. But believe it or not, today, cases of iodine deficiency are on the rise in developed countries, thanks to the popularity of restrictive diets and natural non-iodized salts. In areas where iodine deficiency isn't an issue, the leading cause is Hashimoto's thyroiditis, an autoimmune disease where the body attacks and slowly destroys the thyroid gland. And this is particularly common in women. Of course, there are many other causes, but we would need a whole other video for that. Okay, so now if you think you have some of these symptoms, how do we make the diagnosis? Fortunately, it's simple. We do a blood test to check your TSH level, which, as you'll remember, is the signal your brain releases to tell your thyroid to make more thyroid hormone. And if your TSH level is too high, it normally means your thyroid is underperforming. And we can confirm this by measuring the actual thyroid hormones circulating in our body, called T4 and T3. The good news is that hypothyroidism is very treatable. We have a medication called levothyroxine, which is a thyroid hormone replacement. The doctor will titrate the dose based on your TSH level. And when your TSH is normal, then we know that your brain is happy with the amount of thyroid hormone that's circulating in your body. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn about the liver next, then I'd recommend checking out this video next. Stay curious, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next video. So bye for now. Yeah.